Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. This video is about diet in pregnancy and lactation. Maternal nutrition from preconception through to lactation has both short and long term health effects on the offspring. Requirements for many nutrients increase in pregnancy and lactation and some dietary changes are required. Now for a woman with normal pre-pregnancy body mass index, there is a negligible increase in energy requirement in the first trimester. This is followed by an extra requirement of 335 kilocalorie per day in the second, 450 in the third and 275 to 500 during the lactation. Energy requirements vary according to the pre-pregnancy BMI with lower requirements for the overweight and obese women and higher requirements for the underweight women. Dieting to prevent weight gain or achieve weight loss is not recommended during pregnancy as it may result in inadequate intake of essential nutrients which could adversely affect fetal growth and development. Now this video outlines cases of specific nutrients and special condition in pregnancy and lactation. First of all I talk about folic acid. Periconceptional folic acid supplementation has been shown to reduce first time occurrence of the neural tube defects by up to 72% and recurrence by 68%. Critical window for increasing folate intake for prevention of neural tube defect is before the neural tube closure, which normally occur by day 28 after the conception. As it can take 3 weeks to increase serum folate towards adequacy, supplementation should commence at least 1 month before conception and continue until at least 1 month after conception, although up to 3 months is often advised. Now, a daily folic acid dose of 400 to 500 microgram is recommended for low-risk women, that is, with no family history of neural tube defects and not on anticonvulsant. While a folic acid dose of 4000 to 5000 microgram is recommended for women with a personal or close family history of neural tube defects. Now, here are some natural and fortified sources of folate. Now next is iodine. It is required for production of thyroid hormones which are essential for the normal fetal and infant growth and their brain development. Major fetal effects of severe iodine deficiency include abortions, stillbirths, congenital anomalies, increased perinatal and infant mortality and cretinism. In an effort to prevent iodine deficiency, salt iodization has been implemented in nearly all countries worldwide. Now, in countries where less than 20% of households have access to iodized salt, the WHO and UNICEF recommend iodine supplementation for pregnant and lactating women. Although its functional consequences are not well established, many countries recommend a daily supplement containing 150 microgram of iodine in preconception pregnancy and lactation. Iodine fortified foods, for example bread, are available in some countries. While iodine is also found naturally in certain foods, iodine content can vary widely due to a number of factors including geographical location and environmental factors such as iodine concentration in the soil. Now, kelp and seaweed based products should be avoided during pregnancy and lactation due to their large variability in the iodine content. Next is iron. Iron requirements increase in second and third trimester to support fetal growth, placental tissue development and expansion of the red cell mass. Intestinal iron absorption increases to meet increased iron requirements and reaches peak efficiency during the third trimester when majority of the iron transfer occurs. In iron sufficient pregnancies, enough iron is transferred to meet the infant's iron requirements for the first 6 months of life. Now maternal iron requirements are reduced during the lactation and increase to pre-pregnancy level when menstruation resumes. Now heme iron from the animal source is better absorbed than the non-heme iron from the plant sources. Iron absorption from plant food can be increased by consuming meat protein or a source of vitamin C at the same meal. This includes citrus fruit and juices, strawberry, kiwi fruit, tomatoes and broccoli. 
Now, dietary components which can inhibit absorption of both heme and non-heme iron include calcium, zinc, and phytates, which are found in legumes and whole grains. Polyphenols, which are found in tea and coffee, can also inhibit non-heme iron absorption. Now, this may have special significance for vegetarians who also consume tea and coffee as a part of their daily diets. Now, while a routine iron supplementation during pregnancy is not common practice in all countries, WHO recommend daily oral iron supplementation in a dose of 30 to 60 mg of elemental iron as part of the antenatal care to reduce the risk of low birth weight, maternal anemia, and iron deficiency. Now, a daily dose of 60 mg of elemental iron is recommended in settings where prevalence of anemia in pregnancy is more than 40% and 120mg is recommended when there is a clinical diagnosis of anemia. Now next is calcium. It is required for fetal and infant bone development and mineralization as well as for the breast milk production. Now maternal bone turnover and intestinal absorption of calcium increase during pregnancy to help meet fetal calcium requirements. The majority of calcium is transferred to the fetus in third trimester. During lactation, calcium from the mother's bone is transferred to infant via the breast milk. Now this bone resorption is independent of the calcium intake and is completely reversible, with bone density being restored 6 to 12 months after the cessation of breastfeeding. Now the recommended daily intake of calcium during pregnancy and lactation is 1000 mg for adults and 1300 mg for adolescents. This can be provided by 3 to 4 servings of calcium rich foods. Each serving provides about 300 mg of calcium. Now, here are the dietary sources of calcium. Calcium supplements should be taken if dairy intake is low or if the intake from other sources is inadequate. Now, next is vitamin D. It is important for regulating calcium and phosphorus metabolism. A deficiency during pregnancy has been associated with impaired calcium and skeletal homeostasis, congenital rickets, and fractures in the newborn. Vitamin D3 is synthesized in the skin cells upon exposure to ultraviolet B radiation from the sunlight. And adequate exposure to sunlight can provide most people with their daily vitamin D requirement. Now, vitamin D can also be obtained through diet from a limited range of natural sources and variably fortified foods available in some countries. Darker skinned women and those with limited exposure to sunlight are less likely to synthesize sufficient vitamin D. Women at risk of deficiency should be screened for low serum 25-hydroxy vitamin D levels and should be supplemented as required. Now, a few words about nutrition in multi-fetal pregnancies. In addition to usual maternal physiological adaptation that occur with singleton pregnancies, in multifetal pregnancies, there is an additional increase in the plasma volume, basal metabolic rate, and resistance to carbohydrate metabolism. So, higher intake of protein, calcium, iron, and folate, all are required to support the fetal and placental growth and increase maternal metabolism. Now, next is vegetarian diets. These diets vary and identifying which foods are excluded will help determine which nutrients are likely to be inadequately supplied. Vitamin B12 is an essential nutrient which only occurs naturally in animal-derived foods. Therefore, diets low in or excluding animal products can be low in vitamin B12. Vitamin B12 deficiency during pregnancy and lactation can cause megaloblastic anemia and neurological damage in infant. To avoid the deficiency, some animal-derived foods or vitamin B12 fortified foods should be consumed or vitamin B12 supplements should be taken. Adequate intake of iron, zinc, calcium and protein should also be ensured. Now, vegetarian sources of protein include dairy foods, legumes, cereals and grains as well as nuts and seeds. Now, mercury in fish. Fish is an important part of healthy diet. It provides long-chain omega-3 fatty acid and it is a good source of protein and minerals including iodine. Mercury is a neurotoxin which occur naturally in the environment and accumulate in the fish. Consumption of fish during pregnancy and lactation should be guided by the relevant national government endorsed recommendation 
which generally advise eating two to three meals per week of fish or shellfish with low mercury levels and avoiding or limiting consumption of fish which is high in mercury such as predatory deep sea fish now canned fish generally has lower levels of mercury as smaller species and younger fish are used for canning next is herbal teas or herbal supplements there is insufficient evidence to support the consumption of herbal teas or herbal supplements during the pregnancy or lactation most herbal preparations have not been tested to establish their efficacy and safety and some may be dangerous to the developing fetus or infant now another important thing to discuss here is listeriosis it is a rare but serious infection which is caused by eating food contaminated with bacterium listeria monocytogenes now transmission of listeria to fetus can cause miscarriage premature labor or stillbirth risk of listeriosis can be reduced by avoiding high risk food and taking some simple food hygiene and food safety steps now for this foods to avoid include chilled ready to eat foods such as cold cooked chicken cold processed meats pre prepared and pre packed cold salads raw seafood soft serve ice cream unpasteurized dairy products patty as well as soft and semi soft cheese now next is caffeine this include coffee tea and caffeine soft drinks some caffeine is transferred to fetus via placenta and to infant via the breast milk a daily intake of 200 to 300 mg of caffeine equivalent to 2 to 3 cups of coffee is considered to have no adverse effect energy drinks are not recommended as they can contain high levels of caffeine okay friends thanks for watching please like share comment and subscribe to my youtube channel for more informative health videos